Well g'day and welcome to the channel. A few months ago I released a video talking about the autofocus issues I've been having with my Canon R7. In today's video I want to share with you the response I got from Canon and the settings they suggested I use. And then I'm going to share with you the results that I had going out into the field using those settings and I'll share with you the settings that I found to produce the most consistent autofocus with the Canon R7. First I want to describe the exact autofocus issue I'm having with the camera. When I shoot in bursts, say 15 or 30 frames per second, the focus shifts between shots for unknown reasons. So what do I mean by that? Well I can take a shot which is sharp and the very next shot the subject is soft and then it becomes sharp again and I don't really know what's going on. So take a look at this eastern yellow robin. When we autofocus on the subject the focus point goes on the bird and we would expect it to be sharp where the focus point is. However in this shot we've got the focus point on the eye of the subject however it's soft and it's out of focus. But if we look at the perch behind the bird it is sharp. So the focus point instead of being here is actually further behind which has caused the bird to go soft. And I want to be crystal clear that I'm not having issues with the sharpness of this camera. The sharpness is completely fine. It's only where it is sharp. It's sharp in the wrong place. So if you're not aware when we shoot with these telephoto lenses we have a very shallow depth of field. What I mean by that is say we've got a subject like this fuzzy owl and it's sitting on a perch. When we focus on the eye only a certain amount in front and behind will be in focus and that area is called our depth of field. If your focus shifts, say the focus point is actually behind the bird, the front of it could be out of focus because it's outside that depth of field. So your depth of field is extremely important and where it actually focuses is critical because if the focus is wrong your subject is likely to be soft. So I need to stress that this doesn't happen all the time and it's just enough to be annoying and it just confuses me because I believe if the focus point is on the subject then it should be sharp. I don't know why it's moving backward and forwards like it is and that's my confusion. Now that's what I said in the video and many of you actually agreed with me if you read the comments a lot of you are having the exact same issue however a lot of you aren't. A lot of you are very happy with your Canon R7 autofocus much sharper and much better than your DSLR which leaves me a little bit confused. So what's going on? I don't know. I think the best bet for me was to contact Canon and just let them know of the exact issue I'm having and see if they could give me some feedback. And Canon have obviously come back to me and said look send your gear in to us and we'll inspect it and make sure there's nothing technically wrong with the camera. So that's what I did. I boxed up the camera, sent it off to Canon and awaited their response. They had it for a few weeks, they ran a number of tests, they talked to Canon in Japan and they came back to me with the following response and I'll read it out to you. We believe the autofocus issues you have presented are a limitation of the R7 capabilities. The R3, the R5, the R6 Mark II have autofocus speeds that are superior to the R7. The AF accuracy may become unstable due to low contrast. Canon suggested there is a possibility that improvements can be achieved changing the drive mode settings from H plus to H. Using the lower continuous shooting gives more time to achieve focus thus better hit success rate. Higher continuous shooting will give lower hit success rate. All right let's break down what Canon said there. There's probably three key takeaways from that. The first one is there is nothing technically wrong with my Canon R7. It is working as intended from the factory which is good to know. I'm happy to hear there's nothing wrong with my camera. The second big takeaway is Canon are admitting that the Canon R7 autofocus is not as fast or as accurate as the more expensive bodies such as the R5 and that's to be expected but they've admitted that the Canon R7 or the autofocus issues I'm having are a limitation of the speed and the performance of this body and low contrast situations. Third issue is that they have admitted that if you shoot at the highest frame rates such as 15 frames per second or 30 frames per second your hit rate is going to be lower than if you use a low frame rate. So what does that actually mean for us owners of the Canon R7? We just need to be aware of this limitation. We just need to be aware if we shoot at the highest frame rate so H plus and low light or low contrast situations the autofocus is going to struggle and that's just the way it is and I guess we should expect that given the price of this body. And I'm actually extremely appreciative of Canon for being so honest. It makes me feel a lot better knowing that my camera is not faulty and it's not necessarily user error and I'm sure some of you that are experiencing these problems will be the same. I think this raises the big question why include such high frame rate if the camera can't operate at its full potential? 
I wasn't aware of this when I bought the camera. I didn't realize that if I shoot at 30 frames per second, the autofocus isn't gonna be as consistent. I didn't read that anywhere. I think for me, the question is why? Why can't the R7 perform at 30 frames per second? If you've got a theory, let me know in the comments. My armchair theory is that the readout speed of the sensor is too slow. So if you're not aware with mirrorless bodies, my understanding is that the autofocus is done on the sensor itself. It works at a certain speed to send information to the lens and back. So it's constantly doing autofocus calculations. The speed of those calculations is based off the readout speed of the sensor. As we know, the R7 readout speed is not all that fast. We don't have official numbers because nobody releases them. If you do some research online, my understanding is the R7 is around 31 milliseconds, I think, around that. For example, the R5 here, 15. So this is twice as fast. So perhaps it does twice as many autofocus calculations. And I think this becomes pretty obvious when we're shooting at 30 frames per second, we're asking a lot of this camera. There's a lot of data be processed there. All these calculations non-stop, it's probably just overwhelms the camera and it just can't keep up. And that's why Canon is suggesting shooting at a much lower frame rate so that their <laughs> readout speed can keep up. And that may be the reason why the Sony A7 Mark IV only does 10 frames per second. Maybe Sony and Nikon and a few others realize this limitation, therefore they don't give us the high frame rate on their slower readout sensors. I guess that would make sense. Okay, with that information in hand, there's only one thing to do, that's go out into the field and try the autofocus. I'll quickly share the main autofocus settings that I use. So I was in servo and I've got animals as the subject. And when we go to switching tracks subjects, that's how sticky it is. I've given it full priority to the initial priority. So whatever it finds first, I want it to stay on that. And then if we go to the cases, I've gone with case two and I've actually set the tracking sensitivity to minus two, which is locked on, because I want the camera to stay on the subject. I want it to lock on there and don't lose it. All right, and then we go down to the accelerated, decelerated tracking, and this one's a little bit tricky, because if we go positive two, that's for erratic subjects, but if we want subjects that are somewhat stationary, then we should probably go minus one or minus two. So I've got it at minus one, just for stationary subjects. If you're doing bird and flight of swallows or whatever, you probably ideally need plus two in that regard. In terms of the drive mode, I was using electronic first curtain at eight frames per second. And I've basically focused on the subject and then I've held down the shutter. And the first thing I remembered or realized is that the shutter noise is quite loud. <laughs> it makes quite a loud noise. So if you've got flighty subjects, you really don't want to use this mode because it'll just scare them away. In that mode, I actually took a burst of 40 shots and only two of them were impacted by the focus shift. I'm pretty happy with that. To have that many sharp images is fantastic. Now I also tried an electronic 15 frames per second and that worked pretty well as well. So it appears to me when you've got high contrast or direct sunlight, the autofocus works very well at that H mode. So that's great news. But I needed to go into that environment where I've had all the trouble. So I've gone back to the Eastern Yellow Robin that is deep in the forest, it's overcast, we've got low contrast, and I decided to try these settings. So I've actually used electronic mode in H, so 15 frames per second, because I hate that blackout. And I've attempted to photograph the Eastern Yellow Robin, and unfortunately we had quite a bit of focus shifting. Basically it was just on the subject, then off the subject, on the subject, off the subject, and it was happening on a fairly regular occurrence. And you can see here that bird is sharp, the next image, the bird is completely soft, but if we look down, the tail is now sharp. So it's moved backwards, and in the very next shot, it's back on the subject. Um, and then I also took a few with the bird was on the rock, focus points on the bird, but we can clearly see the bit of wooden grass in front of the subject is in focus. And a few times, it just completely lost it. So it just was really struggling in that environment. Now, of course, we could try electronic first curtain, which was slightly better, but you've got the loud noise and the blackout and the viewfinder. So I think that was slightly disappointing, but knowing the limitations, I'm just accepting now that if you shoot in low light, you just have to accept the autofocus is not gonna be as good as I had hoped. And I decided to do one more test just to show the difference between contrast and no contrast. I got an owl, I put the owl on rotating, and I've just autofocused in direct sunlight, and nearly all the shots were quite sharp. I didn't really have any issues in this beautiful light that 15 frames per second worked fine. However, as soon as I put that owl into the shadow and low contrast, the issues just popped up again almost straight away. So it's pretty clear to me that there is a distinct difference between 
sunlight, contrast, low light, low contrast. The autofocus just simply struggles. And again, just a pure limitation of this body. So in conclusion, what are the best settings to use if you're using the Canon R7? And it comes down to a couple of factors. The first one, whether your subjects are tame or if they're flighty. If your subjects are tame and there's no issue, I would suggest using um, electronic first curtain in H+. So shoot at 15 frames per second with electronic first curtain. You're gonna reduce any rolling shutter, you're gonna reduce the wobbles, and you're gonna have the most consistent and accurate autofocus. Now, if you're shooting in low light with tame subjects, then just shoot at H mode. So just slow it down to eight frames per second, and that should give you the best quality. Now, if your subject is flighty, you've got a few issues. If you don't wanna disturb that subject, we have to shoot with electronic shutter. Now in direct sunlight, I think you'd be fine at H or H+, because the autofocus is pretty good when we've got direct sunlight. So that's when I would use that. However, if you go into that low light environment and you don't want to scare the subject, you're just going to have to shoot in H mode, 15 frames per second, and just deal with the autofocus issues. And of course, another thing that I haven't mentioned yet, and it's pretty obvious, that if you have a static subject, just don't use tracking. Just shoot in one shot, focus on the bird. You often get a beep, take your photos, focus again, beep. So you don't have to use tracking all the time. This issue only appears to be with tracking and not in one shot. So consider setting up your camera, maybe having a custom function that shoots in one shot or being able to quickly change from one shot to servo. Now I, make, I wanna make it clear, I'm still getting sharp shots. It's not like every shot is out of focus. That's not what I'm saying. It's just inconsistent at times. You will still get sharp shots and I still get plenty of sharp shots. And I've taken numerous wonderful shots with this camera. We just need to be aware of that limitation. So I think I just need to accept the fact that the autofocus will never be as good as the premium bodies, which is to be expected for the price. Now that we know the limitation of the body, we can better adapt to that by changing our burst mode, shooting in bursts, we will still get lots of keepers, and I believe this is still a great camera for people beginning with wildlife. I need to state that it's not just this camera that struggles in those environments. A lot of mirrorless cameras, autofocuses will struggle in low contrast situations. It's obviously just that slow readout which impacts this body a little bit more than other bodies. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Uh, should manufacturers be more open with limitations on their gear? Yeah, should they educate us better about what they can and they can't do? If you enjoyed it, obviously give it that thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. If you're not aware, for the price of less than a cup of coffee, you can become a member. You get a cool little emoji next to your name in the comments. You get the 2023 digital calendar. And of course, it helps me to continue making videos. And I'm extremely grateful for that. So until the next one, take care. See you later.